Now, as you can see, I have the bottom and the top glued onto the sides, and the shelves are in. This is the center section. It's not shelves, it's dust dividers for drawers. But before I glue the back on, I want to clean off the waxy lit uh, when it's still easy to get at. So I'm just going to use a little naphtha. It's a uh, fairly slow drying solvent, and I'll just put a little bit on a paper towel. Don't want it to be particularly wet, but just damp. And go ahead and wipe it on. I know you can't see where I'm wiping, but I'm wiping the corner. And I'm just going to go ahead and dry it off quickly. And I found this doesn't have any adverse effect on the shellac, but it gets that uh, waxy lid off so that the joint looks nice and clean. Now I'm going to glue the backs onto the, uh, the boxes. Uh, this particular box here is the uh, one of the side boxes. And you can see I've got this curved top. Somehow I've got to put the back here and clamp the back onto the case, but not get, have the clamp slipping off this, uh, this uh, curve. So what I did was I saved the uh, cutoffs from when I had uh, cut, cut these curves. It's always a good idea to save your cutoffs in a project until you're done because you just never know when you're going to need them. And uh, so I'll take the uh, cutoff for the bottom and you can see it fits on here nicely and I'll be able to clamp uh, one face of the clamp here, one down here, it'll be a nice square clamping and it won't slip. Except the cutoff itself slips. Even though I put some masking tape on to protect the surface, it still slips. So I had an idea and you are witnessing an experiment that worked because you're seeing this. If it hadn't worked, I wouldn't be showing you. And I bought some of this uh, shelf liner kind of stuff. It's, I think they, you know, it has the word grip in the title. Uh, but it's this uh, rubbery stuff that uh, kind of has a little bit of tack to it and people use it to line the inside of drawers and so forth. I'm just going to lay a little strip along here and then put my, my call on here. And look now, it doesn't, it doesn't slide. So I ought to be able to clamp this and not have the, the call slide off the end. So we'll see how this works. And here's the entire glue up. You can see I put little pads on the bottom uh, of the uh, clamps. These are just a little piece of paper towel. Just to give a little bit more padding to the already uh, soft plastic that, that's used on the clamp. And uh, we seem to be holding very well. We had a little bit of difficulty in the back here. This back call, which uh, is along the side, is uh, such a steep angle that it had a tendency to slip. In fact, I discovered the biggest slip was where the masking tape was attached to the call, so I removed the masking tape, and we seem to be holding pretty well. Um, we're not looking for a whole lot of uh, strength from this particular joint along the side here, but I like to have a little bit, and uh, mostly, uh, mostly the dominoes are going to give us the, uh, the rigidity that we need in this piece. Often when I make a piece that has uh, legs, uh, all of the legs uh, will not lie in exactly the same plane so that when the piece is sitting on the floor it will rock a little bit. So uh, I've turned this piece, uh, this frame upside down and I've already marked which legs are a little bit long after uh, setting this on a very smooth flat surface and I'm just going to use uh, my, my Rotex sander here with the 36 grit sandpaper and just uh, very gently and evenly sand down the surfaces that are high. With the feet now squarely on the floor, uh, I'm going to go ahead and 
and level off the uh, pieces that hold the top and the pieces that hold the box, these, uh, these uh, cross uh, pieces, and to uh, check that they're coplanar, I'm going to use what's called winding sticks. I've got a pair of these. You can make these, uh, or I purchased these myself. I, um, these are precision, but uh, you lay it, the winding stick on the surface. You have another winding stick on the opposite surface that you're trying to square up, and then you just step back and you sight along the sticks, and you can get an idea of how much you need to take off of a particular surface. And I can see that between the two uh, the two cross pieces here to hold the top, uh, one side, one corner is up about a sixteenth and the opposite corner is up about a sixteenth for a total of about an eighth inch of, uh, of out of planer. And so I'll use a, a hand uh, plane just to trim off a, a sixteenth or so from each side and, and, uh, and see how that goes. Now I've gotten through planing all of the cross pieces that hold the carcass boxes. And I found that this very last cross piece is just a little bit low. So rather than go and plane down all the rest of the cross pieces and have to fiddle with that for hours trying to get them all level, I'm simply going to shim up this cross piece using a couple of pieces of uh, cherry veneer scrap that I have. And I'll simply um, uh, glue down these two layers on here. And after the glue is set, I'll trim it up. I'll hit it with a little finish and we'll be all done. Now I'm going to uh, fit the boxes onto the stretcher and leg assembly and it's really critical to get these exactly right. The curve on the front of the boxes has to match the curve of the front stretchers. There can't be any gaps, discontin you know, discontinuities with the curves and at the same time the the backs need to be flat and all in the same plane and all the heights have to be the same uh, and the gaps between the boxes have to be parallel they can't be wider at the top than they are at the bottom so it takes a, quite a bit of finagling to get these exactly right and then I mark where the bottom stretchers intersect the boxes so that I can then take the boxes off, drill holes where they'll be screwed into the bottom stretchers. Normally on a cabinet I like to use nice brass hinges. In this case I would have used nice brass butt hinges. But the problem is, is that the door overlays the side here. So the pivot point is such that when the door opens it would actually contact the leg because the door is thicker than this distance between the box and the leg. So, in, in this case I'm going to go ahead and use some, uh, some Bloom European uh, style hinges that are specially made uh, with a 15 degree angle on the hinge. And here I've got a mock-up of the installation of the hinge. Uh, this piece represents the side and this piece represents the door. You've got to use your imagination. But you see, when it's uh, attached, you open the door and the door slides and never passes the plane, the outside plane of the side. And that will make it so the door can open and close and never be interfering with the, or with the, uh, the leg. Very nice. Here's a quick, uh, quick explanation of how I attach these uh, these concealed hinges for the doors. Uh, I have to attach a small mounting plate on the inside of the cabinet and I've got some holes drilled uh, or marked, excuse me, to drill. And uh, once that mounting plate's attached, the hinge itself clips onto the mounting plate like that so that the hinge is then attached. And this part of the hinge is what fits into the door itself, so the first thing I have to do is drill a large uh, inch and three eighths inch hole, not all the way through the door, and into that fits the, the hinge that then gets screwed into place. So you attach the hinges to the door and then you just clip them 
onto the mounting plates that are already inside the case. And now you can see how the doors look mounted to their respective cabinets. They open nicely, there's no interference with the leg. Works very well.